A virtual tour of Lehman Caves, Part 3, Great Basin National Park. An image of the Lodge Room. Welcome back to Great Basin National Park for Part 3 of the Virtual Lehman Caves Tour. If you haven't seen the first and second parts of the virtual tour, we recommend watching those before beginning this video. During our trip, this bat icon will pop up at points of interest. Feel free to click on the bat when it appears to learn more. If you're all set, let's resume our tour of Lehman Caves. We're going to continue our journey by entering the Lodge Room and then make our way toward the exit tunnel. Along the way, we'll make some stops and explore the cave and the creatures who call it home. Here is the Lodge Room. It's not the biggest space, nor is it the most highly decorated. Instead, what this room boasts is one of the most interesting human histories in the cave. Based on stories and photographs, we know this room was once used to host events such as dances, weddings, and even a scene for a film. As you might imagine, some of these events may have significantly damaged the cave. It's because of these past events that park rangers are always working hard to restore as much of the cave to its natural beauty as possible and limit the impact we currently have on the cave. A bat icon is in the upper right to click on cave restoration video. Humans aren't the only ones responsible for changes made to the cave. The natural processes that formed this cave happened over a long period of time. When these processes take place, they leave clues. For example, deep grooves in the wall, raised sections of the ceiling, or smooth portions of the cave. The reason we call this smooth section of the cave the giant's ear is because it's shaped like an ear, and it's really big. While the giant's ear not only serves as a comedic opportunity for rangers, it's also a clear sign of the effects of more recent geologic processes in the cave. Click on the bat in the upper right hand corner for a condensation corrosion video. We leave looking up at the rounded giant's ear and go to the right hand side of the passageway down at the floor level where we look at rimstone dams where when wet the water pours from one area to the next. We go slightly uphill past some columns on the right and through some delicate formations along the way. This is not the cave trail but next to it. As we continue, we see more stalactites and soda straws on the right-hand side. Stalagmites from a few inches to over a foot on the left-hand side. Before we completely leave the lodge room area, we have to do the responsible thing and turn off the lights behind us. There are multiple reasons we do this, but one of the most important is that we want to ensure the cave remains in its natural state as much as possible. Since the only natural entrance is located near the entrance tunnel, no sunlight would reach most of the cave, meaning its natural state would be complete darkness. Because many organisms in the cave, such as bats, depend on natural darkness, it is vital that we keep the cave dark when we do not need the light. In the upper right hand corner, click on Bats in Lehman Caves, extra video. We see light switches and then we're turning around and going from the lodge room down the, towards the exit tunnel. There are layers of flowstone on the right-hand side of that shoulder. Although level. we work as much as we can to restore and maintain a natural rhythm and environment in the cave, there are times we have made changes. For example, looking to the side of this passageway, we can see where the cave floor is versus where the trail floor is. This section of the cave was blasted through in 1970 to create access to the exit tunnel we will soon be in. It was deemed a necessary act to avoid bottlenecks from tours entering and exiting along the same narrow passage and to avoid resulting damage to the cave. To create this pathway, much of the thick flowstone here was removed. Now we can see one of the cave's largest shield speleothems. In the upper right, click on the bat for cave shields. We see a big, rounded, broken cave shield 10 feet across. Ahead of us, we have the doorway that will allow us to access the exit tunnel to leave Lehman Caves. 
Yet, as discussed before, there are organisms that never leave the cave and instead live their entire life cycles underground. These organisms are called troglobites. Organisms who frequent caves but do not live their entire life cycle in a cave are called troglozines. Even humans may be considered troglozines if they visit or work in caves frequently. Some species within Lehman Caves have adapted and evolved to specifically survive and thrive in the dark and quiet subterranean environment. In the upper right, click on the bat to learn more about cave life. We see a few cave formations, and then we're going to turn and go through the- That concludes our virtual tour of Lehman Caves at Great Basin National Park. People and organisms have used the cave in many ways. We've explored how a variety of life has used the cave. While we walk away from the mysterious world that caves provide us, we'd like you to take a moment and reflect how caves make you feel. Whatever the sensation might be, we hope you've enjoyed your experience with us and learned some new information about Great Basin National Park, Lehman Caves, and cave life in general. If you still have a hunger for more knowledge or resources, we've linked some National Park Service resources in the description box below, as well as provided our park website if you wish to learn more about the surrounding park. Thank you so much for joining us on the virtual tour of Lehman Caves, and we hope to see you in person at Great Basin National Park. We go down the exit tunnel, a plain tunnel with a concrete floor and gunite walls. Directed by Blaise LaSalle, data collection, assisted by multiple people, photogrammetry, Jack Wood, written by Yvonne Bermejo. Narration by Alicia Bake, music by Fluidscape by Kevin McLeod. A special thank you to Goshute and Paiute tribes, descendants of Takeshi Bond family, Great Basin National Park staff. Funded by the Southern Nevada Public Lands Management Act.